Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. A man is trapped in a time loop where he is being pursued by elite mercenaries, and cycle after cycle he will have to fight to survive, and at the same time, try to figure out what is causing it. Today we will recap the story of the 2021 movie, Boss Level. After learning that the lab where his ex-wife works is hiring new security, Roy, a former US Army captain, goes there to apply for the job. However, while talking to Gemma, he realizes that something strange is happening and that the woman is very worried. Curious, Roy starts asking questions about what is being developed there and discovers that she is working on the Osiris Spindle, a kind of particle accelerator that is capable of manipulating time. From his office, project founder Colonel Clive is listening to the entire conversation and believes she is talking too much, so he orders security chief Brett to go to the lab and send him away. As soon as he arrives at the place, Brett says that this is a restricted place and because of that visits are not accepted. Finally, he says they're not hiring and takes the resume to the colonel who examines the file and says that Roy is a person who should be closely watched, so he orders Brett to hire some mercenaries to go after him. In the lab, Gemma cuts a lock of Roy's hair, and realizing that the colonel doesn't like his presence there, she tries to warn him to be careful. But just then, Brett returns with some security to kick him out. Before Roy leaves, Gemma hugs him and whispers in his ear that she left a package at his house, as well as saying that the clue is Osiris. With absolutely no understanding of what just happened, Roy goes to a bar where he meets a dental assistant named Alice and starts drinking too much. But at a moment when the girl walks away, Gemma calls him saying that she will take a drastic measure and needs help, but the colonel is once again listening to everything and manages to make the call drop. Even without being able to explain Roy properly about her plans, Gemma puts the man's hair in a kind of capsule and walks towards the spindle without imagining that the colonel heard everything and now knows that she is trying to betray him. Once again not understanding what is happening, Roy goes home and spends the night with Alice. Something Gemma did with that hair in the spindle put Roy in an infinite time loop, where he always wakes up at 7am being hunted by mercenaries, and every time he's eliminated by one of them, he goes back to his bed and starts over dot the day as if nothing had happened. After facing the same mercenaries over 140 times, Roy has learned to neutralize most of them and can easily deal with a man who breaks into his home. As if that wasn't enough, right after this guy comes a helicopter with a shooter using a minigun to strafe the apartment. But Roy can also deal with this guy throwing a knife right in his forehead, making him lose control of the weapon and hit the pilot who crashes the helicopter right into the apartment, forcing Roy to jump out the window in a sand truck to survive. After starting the day in this pleasant way, every cycle Roy steals a random guy's car and starts running through the streets of two other bounty hunters in a fast and furious style. On the occasions when he doesn't get shot or ends up crashing into some other vehicle and getting a game over, Roy manages to lose his pursuers after making a risky maneuver near a bus and heads straight to Mr. Chow's bar. In every iteration he got to this part, Roy orders two bottles of liquor and starts drinking too much in exactly the same way, plus he always meets the exact same people, Dave, a security expert, and Dai Fang, master fencer who won the world championship 12 times. But even though he's lived through that same day over a hundred times, Roy can't get past that point. No matter where he is, always at 1247 all the mercenaries still alive find him and finish him off at once. As with all other attempts, Roy reappears in his bed at 7 am sharp, and in each cycle he is eliminated in a different way, sometimes being beheaded by a swordsman named Guan Yin, sometimes machine gunned by the minigun guy, or maybe blown up by a dwarf, plus of course the routine headshot. But no matter what, he is always eliminated and has to relive this nightmare. After being eliminated so many times, in one of the cycles Roy finally suspects that this has something to do with the Osiris spindle that Gemma is working on and calls her to try to get help. But who answers in her place is Colonel Clive claiming that she suffer a very suspicious accident and that now is no longer alive. But he doesn't even have time to grieve, as soon as he receives the news a pair of twins simply appears, out of nowhere and blows it up with two bazooka shots. Now knowing that Gemma is no longer alive and will not be able to help him, Roy spends one attempt after another trying to find out what exactly is going on, but is always eliminated by the mercenaries until 1247. After failing several times, Roy finally remembers what Gemma said when she said goodbye and goes to look at the packages, where he finds an envelope with a book with Osiris on the cover. Brilliant as he is, Roy simply forgets about everything that is going on and starts reading the book in the middle of the room, but is soon eliminated by the helicopter gunman. In the next cycle, Roy steals the same car as always and once again, proves that he is completely out of his mind when he tries to read while driving and is hit by that bus, losing his life instantly. After these two brilliant attempts, Roy finally has a good idea and after blowing up the bounty hunter's car with a grenade launcher, 
he decides to go to a quieter place so he can read the book and find out what clues Gemma left for him there. Sitting on the bench in a sort of underground gallery, Roy opens the book and sees that several sentences were underlined by Gemma, but while reading the book he sees his son Joey buying something with a man and entering a game store. As Gemma was eliminated by the colonel, now Roy is the only family left for the boy, but he has a problem. Joey still doesn't know that Roy is his father. Trying to get close to the boy, Roy enters the video game store and starts looking for him, but a strange thing starts to happen. All analog monitors start to experience interference as soon as Roy approaches. After walking around the place disrupting everyone's gameplay, Roy finally finds Joey and after talking for a while, decides to take the boy for a walk and make up for the time he's been away. But as soon as they leave the gallery, Roy sees a clock and realizes that it's already 12.50 p.m., which is three minutes more than he can survive when he's at the bar. Thinking about the two places where it managed to survive the longest, the interior of the bar is entirely made of metal and the gallery is an underground place, so both places have characteristics that interfere a lot with radio waves and GPS, that is, it is being tracked. But when he realizes that there is nothing left to do, Roy is once again cornered by all the remaining mercenaries and only has time to run a few meters with Joey on his lap until he once again receives a several shots in his back, losing life instantly. As soon as the next cycle starts, instead of taking out that mercenary who always wakes him up, he arrests the guy and tries to get him to tell where the tracker is, but as soon as he realizes the man won't talk, he throws him in front of the minigun guy, causing him to be destroyed like a piece of paper. With this idea frustrated, Roy resorts to plan B he drives straight to Mr. Chow's restaurant and goes to the bathroom where he starts looking for some sort of device on his clothes or body, but can't find anything at all. Frustrated, Roy starts to leave the place as he thinks about what to do, but on the way he passes Dave and remembers that he is a security expert and therefore must also understand a lot about surveillance. Roy starts talking to Dave about trackers and is able to discover that the most common place to implant a tracker is in one of the molars. Yeah. It was that dental assistant from the night before who implanted the tracker in him. Wanting to get rid of the device, Roy asks Mr. Chow for a pair of pliers and goes to the bathroom where he starts pulling out his own teeth one by one until he finally finds the locator, but now it's too late. At exactly 12.47, one of the mercenaries finds him in the bathroom with the device in his hand and game over. On the next attempt, Roy takes the life of the first mercenary as usual, but instead of letting Alice run like he always does, he captures her and forces her to tell who sent her to implant the tracker, making him finally realize that this is all Colonel's work. With this new information, Roy goes to the bar and pulls his tooth out once more, and now with the locator in hand, he begins to attract the mercenaries and finally begins his revenge, eliminating them with the same methods they used. After taking their lives, Roy gathers the bodies in an abandoned factory and uses the little person explosives to send pieces of mercenaries flying through the air, just as he had countless times. Once he's finished taking down the mercenaries, Roy gets a call from Brett and vows to get revenge for what they did to Gemma, but it won't be easy. With only Brett and the Colonel left to fulfill his objective, Roy drives to the research center and tries to invade the place in several different ways, but in all of them he ends up catching the attention of the guards and is eliminated by Brett. That's when the madman doesn't end his own life by hitting the wall. After wasting three more cycles, Roy finally decides to use his brains and go stealth. He then finds and eliminates one of the mercenaries who was chasing him, stealing his clothes and badge in order to infiltrate the building, but for some reason the elevator's security system cannot read the ID card and his cover is blown. When a security guard in the elevator asks to check the card, because of this problem, in the next cycle he eliminates the elevator guard before even trying to use the card, but as soon as he gets to the floor he wants he is surrounded by Brett and other security guards, forcing him to take his own life to start over. On the third attempt, Roy retraces all the way and once again eliminates the security guard from the elevator, but it's only when he gets to the floor he wanted that he finally realizes there's a security camera there, which is why he's discovered and eliminated every time. On the fourth attempt, Roy finally realizes that that mercenary didn't have access to the restricted areas of the facility, and still outside, he steals the uniform and card of one of the security guards, so he can finally go through with his disguise and use the elevator. When he arrives on the laboratory floor, Roy leaves the elevator and starts eliminating the unsuspecting guards, finally managing to reach the next room where Guan Yin is already waiting for him. After a short conversation, Guan Yin shows all her swordsmanship skills and starts running towards Roy incorporating Samurai Jack, slicing his pistol and doing the same thing with his head shortly after. Seeing that a simple pistol would not be enough, in the next attempts Roy takes other more powerful weapons along the way, but even using a submachine gun and even a rifle he loses his head repeatedly by the swordsman. After losing so many times, 
Roy finally remembers that he still hasn't read the Book of Osiris and goes back to the underground gallery to finally see the message Gemma left. Upon reading the underlined sentences, Roy realizes that Gemma was the one who used the spindle and that he will need to stop the colonel if he wants to end these cycles. Knowing that he has no chance of getting past Guan Yin and reaching the colonel in his current state, Roy gives up trying to face her and decides to go to the Chinese restaurant where he asks that fencer to start training him. From here he will go through dozens of cycles just training swordsmanship with Dai Feng until he reaches an ultimate skill level. Feeling ready for the duel, Roy goes back to Guan Yin, takes one of the swords hanging on the wall and uses all his new skill to humiliate his opponent in combat, cutting her hair and showing several times that he could eliminate her if he wanted to. But after some time enjoying himself, he finally gets tired and stabs Guan Yin with her own sword. At that moment, Brett arrives in the room along with the colonel and starts shooting at Roy who hides behind a pillar. Wanting to finish him off, Brett runs towards him and ducks behind the pillar as well, but comes back a few seconds later with Guan Yin's sword stuck in his forehead. With no one else to stop him, Roy challenges the colonel to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat and begins advancing towards him. Despite both having undergone military training, Colonel Clive is clearly superior and manages to throw Roy away. He then takes advantage of the moment to try to grab Brett's pistol from the floor. But Roy grabs his sword and stabs it in his hand before the colonel can do anything. With victory almost guaranteed, Roy starts talking to the colonel and tells him that Gemma used the spindle so he could stop him, but the bastard just ignores it and says that Roy should be using his time to protect Joey, not trying hard to eliminate it. Unbelieving that the colonel has done anything to his son, Roy cuts off his head and immediately starts driving quickly towards the gallery, but when he arrives at the scene he is faced with the worst possible scene, his lifeless son being carried by the coroners. Desperate, Roy starts running towards his son as the cops try to stop him, but suddenly a huge bang erupts behind them followed by a huge flash of light. This is the end of the world. It turns out that when a person stays too long under the effects of the Osiris spindle, their existence starts to cause a collapse in the universe, resulting in the destruction of everything we know. But even if it's the end of the world, Roy is so shaken by the fact that he can't save Gemma and his son that he just stands there watching everything fall apart until he returns to his bed at the beginning of another cycle. Knowing that he himself is causing the end of the world and that he will lose his son no matter what he does, Roy becomes extremely depressed and gives up trying to solve the mystery behind the loop, spending several cycles in a row just lying in bed and being eliminated from several different ways. But after some time thinking, Roy decides to use this curse in a positive way and finally reacts by eliminating the first mercenary. He then steals the car and goes straight to the gallery where he spends several hours playing all kinds of video games possible together with Joey. But one cycle after another, in the end, every day ends up exactly the same, with a global meltdown. After spending a few more dozen cycles with his son, Roy starts talking to the boy about Gemma with the intention of bringing up something different, but he could hardly imagine that this conversation would be extremely important. As they talk about his mother's work, Joey says that she hasn't gone home and only called in the morning to say that if anything happens, he should look for Roy. Up until this point, Roy had believed that Gemma had been eliminated around 3 a.m. when she called him at the bar. But now knowing that she spoke to Joey in the morning, Roy decides to check the boy's cell phone and discovers that as of 7.03 she was still alive. It turns out that all cycles start at exactly 7 a.m., and she called Joey at 7.03, meaning when Roy wakes up, Gemma is still alive and maybe he still has some chance of saving her. Not knowing when she was eliminated, Roy spends the end of that cycle with his son and in the next attempt he returns to invade the premises to once again reach the colonel. Inside the lab, Roy sees Gemma's lifeless body on the floor and from the cameras he can see that at 7.14 am Brett finished her, that is, he has 14 minutes to save her from the moment he wakes up. With this information, Roy finishes off Brett and the colonel once more and then takes his own life, beginning what could be his last attempt if he manages to save her. At 7 a.m. Sharp Roy wakes up in his apartment and manages to eliminate the first mercenary, but instead of throwing the knife at the minigun guy as usual, this time he jumps in the helicopter and in exactly one and a half minutes he manages to take down the shooter and surrender the pilot to take him to the top of the building. At the helipad, Roy knows that the mercenaries are following him on the tracker, so he decides to take the minigun from the helicopter. He then finally breaks into the building and waits for them to approach. When that finally happens, Roy uses the minigun with all his fury and takes out all the bounty hunters in one fell swoop. And as if that wasn't enough, he takes Guan Yin's sword and continues advancing towards the laboratory while eliminating all the guards he finds along the way. After cleaning the entire building, Roy manages to get to the lab just as Brett was going to finish Gemma and plunges the blade into him. Finally, he finishes the colonel for the last time and hugs Gemma who is now safe. But it's not over yet. To end the loop, 
Gemma and Roy go to the spindle where she explains that she used the hair she took from him to transform his DNA into some sort of lost mass in the universe. And to resolve this meltdown and prevent the end of the world from repeating itself, Roy needs to return his mass to the spindle's core and thus finally end the instability. Not knowing if he'll make it out of this alive, Roy tells Gemma he loves her and kisses her goodbye. He then slowly walks towards the core while looking at the woman he loves not knowing if he will ever see her again, but still he doesn't give up and enters the spindle, finally restoring balance to the universe. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.